A couple of days ago, Linux Mint put out a blog post about updating your computer. They have noticed an issue where some of the Linux Mint users are not updating their system and still running an old, end of life, unsupported version of Linux Mint. But is this an issue solely affecting Linux Mint, or is there a wider issue affecting all Linux distributions, or I suppose you could say all operating systems as well? Because, yeah, I've seen the uh, sort of stats for number of users still using Windows 7 and even older versions of Windows, which at this point is unsupported. So they're pointing out that security updates are very important. Although I'm not going to mock Linux Mint too much, but uh, yeah, at one time they did make it very difficult to update certain key components, such as the kernel, but I think they've moved on from that and uh, I think they provide appropriate warnings in their update manager. So they're going on about updating is easy. True, updating is safe. <laughs> Actually, no, normally I'd say that, but you wouldn't believe it, right? Before this video, I had some updates to do and it was the kernel. I thought, right, let me just do the updates because it always looks so bad if the video creator and uh, an expert in <laughs> cybersecurity doesn't do their updates. The fact they only appeared today is irrelevant because to you it'll look like I don't do my updates. So I updated my kernel and then I had to reboot and my system did not come back online. It just stayed in a boot loop of all bloody things. It's not done this in years. It's been a long time since I've seen a kernel update actually fail. But of all days, it actually happened to me. So I suppose that's not bad out of like 10 years and I've seen it twice. But yeah, I had to uninstall the old kernel. Unfortunately, I could still get to the old TTY console and yeah, I was able to recover. But yeah, the irony about that. Statistics. And before I give statistics, take the numbers in this blog post with a pinch of salt. We can't measure anything with any precision because there's nothing in your computer which sends data to us and we don't configure Linux Mint in a way that allows us to count how many users we have. In other words, there is nothing in Linux Mint that is common to all users and that we could rely on to establish statistics. And that is a great positive, in fact, that Linux Mint do not spy on you. And this is a subject I have discussed before. So yes, the downside of not spying on you or no reliable statistics is you don't know how many users you have. Do you have one user? Do you have a hundred thousand? Do you have a million? And sites like DistroWatch are not actually reliable at all because that doesn't cover your everyday user who is not going to even visit a site like that, but rather would have an operating system installed for them and then just use it. So that being said, we do have a few metrics we can measure. They give us stats which only tell us one particular aspect of the story and they are unreliable and imprecise, but do tell us something nonetheless. So although Linux Mint have got a couple of statistics here for us, we're also gonna cover a couple more in this video. So about 30% of users apply updates in less than a week, and they've based this on the Firefox version release. So they asked Yahoo to give a breakdown of the Linux Mint traffic per user agent, and these stats only covered users which use Yahoo. The using information your system is going to hand over to a web server. That is a very standard thing. This is not spying in any stretch of the imagination. Your system, when it connects to a website, says, I have this browser, I have this operating system, and I have this version of the browser. So yeah, that only covers it when you use Yahoo. And they were able to observe that 30% of users updated their web browser in less than a week. Very nice. These statistics also show us users of recent Linux Mint releases which do not apply updates at all. For instance, a part of the traffic uses Firefox 77, the version which we shipped with Linux Mint 20. But more alarmingly, they're saying that between 5 and 30% of users run the end of life version of Linux Mint 17. And the stats come from two distinct sources, both highly unreliable. But you can see there's a gap between 5 and 30%, but they do tell us the same story. But of course, 0% of users should be running an unsupported end-of-life operating system, and anything above is not good, whether it's 5 or 30%. So Linux Mint 17 reached end-of-life in April 2019. So the 5% figure comes from the default start page. The longer you use Linux Mint after you installed it, the more likely you are to have changed your first page, so we can reasonably assume the number is lower than reality. 
So from what I remember, the default start page in Firefox is the Linux Mint page. So yeah, that is a very good way you could measure that statistic, but it is going to be unreliable because as they say, you could have changed it. The 30% figure comes from the apt repositories. It's the traffic percentage we get from Linux Mint 17. It's unreliable because apt got better at performing less HTTP requests for the same queries and we lowered the default cache update frequency in modern releases. It's also unreliable because they're recommending the use of local mirrors, so they can't fully calculate that statistic. There's another reason that's going to be unreliable because that's not going to indicate a specific serial number or a very specific tracking identity to the operating system. So it doesn't tell you how many systems you have behind the one IP address which is connecting to these servers. Is it one system? Is it 100 systems? Is it one user or is it a whole company? You don't know. But the important thing is they have gained some statistics and they have stated that between 5 and 30% of users are running an unsupported release of Linux Mint. They've got the instructions here on how to update and that is all very nice, but I can pretty much guarantee that most of the people running these older versions of Linux Mint, or in fact, as I said, older versions of any other operating system, are not going to read these guides and they're not even going to watch these videos. So yes, maybe I'm wasting your time, but anyway, let's carry on. How can we confirm that this statistic is sort of accurate? How can we see the extent of unsupported Linux distributions in use? Well, browser and operating system statistics don't really show us a full picture because they're going to identify Linux as Linux, not each distribution or each version. But you've got things like Steam, which does identify certain versions of the distribution. But even then, that's just like top four with everything else lumped in as other. So not particularly useful. You know, we've got Ubuntu 20.04, the LTS release. Arch, well, as long as you're keeping Arch updated, Arch is a rolling release and you're not gonna know any different. And Linux Mint 20 is there. Other at 48% is still quite a lot of other distributions. So anything else we can do and there was one thing I could think of, and that is snaps. Canonical show a sort of vague count of users by distribution. Now, something like 0 AD is not going to be installed on many systems. You can sort of get a little idea there with just one screenshot. But if I go for something a little, little more popular, like a browser, a browser which they've been forcing to install via Snap, such as Chromium, then this statistic of users by distribution is a little bit larger. That covers quite a variety of distributions there. Ubuntu 20.04 is most popular there and 18.04 is second place. So that's the two LTS releases. And then we've got 2010, 16.04. Well, some of these distributions now getting a bit old and towards end of life. And in fact, as it turns out, 16.04 is pretty much on the verge of it, uh, start of extended support maintenance, the pay for support that is, is April 2021. So only, uh, yeah, literally a few months, a few months away. Ubuntu 1910, 1910's end of life. <laughs> and the story does sort of continue a bit while well, you got Linux Mint. Well, Linux Mint do make it difficult to install snaps, but the fact is that at some point people have installed the snap package of Chromium. And we can see, yeah, we've got Linux Mint 20, uh, 20.1, 20, and well, 19, 18. Uh, do we see Linux Mint 17 here? Um, might be somewhere. No, Linux Mint 18. Uh, Linux Mint 4. That's strange on the versioning. But yeah, we've got no record of numbers here. So it's not a great indicator, but it does give an indication nonetheless that unsupported releases are still being used. See, 18.10. 18.10 went end of life 2019. <laughs> so as you can see, this problem is not just solely with Linux Mint, but as you can see from the stats on Snapcraft, that it also affects other Linux distributions. But what is the solution? Why aren't people doing their updates? Now, could it be that they've had Linux, in fact, let's say Linux Mint placed on their computer and they don't know what to do? Or they think, why should I update? My computer still works. 
they don't necessarily realize the dangers of using unsupported software i mean maybe they're unimportant or they feel unimportant uh, well, who's going to get any details from me they might think so to them it just doesn't matter not necessarily saying that's right or wrong but um, yeah maybe that is how it is the computer still works why do i need to do anything or maybe they're being used in an enterprise environment where there's no ongoing maintenance uh, scheduled but even if it's like you've put it on a parent system or a friend system like maybe updates at the moment during this whole period of lockdowns is going to be very difficult especially if they're somewhere away got to travel i know that situation with one of my friends i'm sure i put kuban to 1404 on his computer well it's gonna be a very long time ago now and i was talking to him recently about doing the updates and then said oh maybe you want to do a backup to another hard drive before you do a new install I haven't got another hard drive. Well, okay then, then I wouldn't advise risking doing a new install if there's no way of backing up the data. You know, it, it, we, what, what's worse in that respect, losing all your data just to an upgrade going wrong or losing data to a hack or security compromise that may or may not take place? But yeah, I think there's more got to be done with Linux distro creators. Like, make it so that Users feel incentivized to do the upgrade. And uh, I don't, I'm not even sure if that is really the answer, but that's about the best I could suggest. The people who aren't doing upgrades, as I said, are not going to be reading this blog post. They're not going to be looking at this video. So the distro creators, you know, you've got your software on their system, motivate them to do the upgrade. And if the current setup is not working, then that's where you've got to think of something else. I suppose one factor of keeping with an older system is, let's say, a desktop environment which is unsupported or unavailable in newer versions that you're only going to get with the version that's going unsupported with what you're using, then yeah, that, I could see that being a good reason. Or maybe you're constrained on resources and the hardware's not good enough to run a newer version of Linux. Um, for example, like being 32-bit only, that may be a very good incentive to keep on an older unsupported version not saying that's right or wrong but that could be a factor and i could understand that being a factor but yeah that is the situation of unsupported operating systems still being used thanks for watching and i'll see you all later